Hello, it's me, the person who puts the videos on the internet and five people actually watch them. That's true and very sad. Anyways, today we're going to be doing something different from the usual pointless garbage, which is figure reviews, specifically Godzilla figures, because I'm a rabid, raving Godzilla fan who will murder anyone who gets in his way. Anyway, Today we are reviewing the Bandai Soul of Jigokin GD76N Gigan 2004 Death Trigger version. It does really look beautiful. This is obviously a special repaint of the ch standard Jigokin Gigan. Well, there were two repaints of that, this figure, but we'll get to that later, which is obviously in red and black instead of blue and silver. Before we get onto the figure, here's the box. Just mess. There we go. Get a good overall look right there. So here it says Soul of Chigogan GD76N. I don't know what that says. Gigan 2005. Oh, wow. And down here it says Death Trigger version in Japanese and English. Thank you. Didn't know. And Bandai. Bandai logo. And then I can use the camera to show the other parts of the box, but there's the drawing. There's a power up type and normal here. It's normal mo mode, I guess. There. Godzilla Final Wars. <coughs> 729 Godzilla Final Wars DVD sticker shiny and it has a silhouette of the Yuji Sakai Godzilla 2000 which is kind of odd and the Godzilla seal of approval which has the Godzilla image from Marvel Comics on the side of the box it says Gigan something she go from Gigan Death Trigger version Picture of the figure. There's a picture of the figure in power up type. Power up mode and it says power up type. Bottom of the box, it just says what the figure is. It's truly riveting. And on the top, <coughs> there's a truly riveting image or name of the figure and picture of the figure on the back. There's the warning label. Flying mode. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. My voice is a little hoggy today. It'll get better soon. Let's see, there's the figure with all of his accessories around him. There's the drawing that inspired the figure. Some Japanese text I probably can't read, but probably blatantly tells what this figure is, even though hardly anyone seems to know. Here in normal mode and power up types. So there's the box and the figure comes packed in it in big styrofoam tray and bags. And the tail has to be assembled. But you just pop in like that. It's a lot easier to do when you're not leaning over a camera in these wings. This middle wing here needs to go in the middle slot, but these other two wings they can go in either slot. It doesn't really matter. It sounds really long, anyways. I don't think the claws came attached either, but I'm not sure. So anyways, let's start with detail and paint job. So as you can see on the bottom of his feet, the detail is very nice. If you focus, 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 no, if you focus, you can kind of see it, but yeah, it looks nice. There's a little thing that looks like a screw in there. A nice worn metal look to it, and the toes, and the red on this figure is amazing, and it just looks beautiful. And the black is, it's, a, it's actually a navy blue with a black painted over it, and it looks very nice. Let's see, detail going up to his knee spikes, kneecaps. They also have a worn metal look to them, and the spikes, which are very sharp. If it would actually focus. Looks very nice. Thighs, chest, 
is very nice as well. The rotary saw, which is also very sharp, looks very nice. His tail, take that off for the sake of convenience. He's very nicely done. More metal look to it, and the tip, which looks very odd, but whatever. And his wings, which are painted in kind of violet color, which look very nice as well. And the visor is also a violet color. His teeth are individually sculpted. Extremely nice, fantastic, might I say, oh, oh, no one gets it. The spikes on the back and this horn, which his horn is kind of warped, and the spikes on the back of his head are kind of warped as well. Really warped, it was like that out of the box. Let's kind of use the shoulder pad, is also loose. His arms are very nicely detailed. The spikes are supposed to bend backwards, so if you say yours is bent, then... It's not, and there's even a way to fix that. And his claws, and I guess hooks. I, I call them claws. Everyone seems to have their own thing to call them. Call them whatever you want there. We should start calling them that. Anyways, very nicely done. You can see all the screws in them. Not the actual screws holding it together, because these are just made of vinyl. Very nice. So, for articulation, the feet are ball jointed, the knees are ratcheted, they get one click and can move like that, the thighs get two clicks out to the side, and about that much forward, and that far backward. The shoulders are ball jointed, a smooth range of movement there, shoulder pads are loose to allow for movement. Elbows can hinge like that and move side to side. The claws, hooks, or we'll just call them claws, like I said earlier, can rotate. And that's another point no one seems to know about is that these actually rotate. You can see it's spinning there, so if it comes bent to the side, you just take it and rotate it backwards, like it should be, which is cool. And the head. Doesn't look side to side, but can move forward, backward. And it's like chicken bobbing motion. And the mouth, I mean, oh, what a, what a ranging got in that mouth. I mean, we could maybe fit a sticky note in there and nothing else because that would probably break his mouth open. Yeah, and the wings can move in and out. These two outer ones. And this back one here moves up and down, but it's kind of kind of spring loaded unless you move it slowly. Which is fine. <coughs> so articulation. Oh, and the tail can kind of wiggle and ball joint there, ball joint there, there and there. So not that wide range of motion, but it's all right. So. Articulation is pretty limited, and for accessories, because you know it's a Chigokin figure, he comes with a he comes with an alternate power-up type head, neck ring for power-up type, a another neck piece for power-up type. You can see all the detail on it there. Power-up type chainsaws, which look very nice, except the screws and. The teeth are very sharp on this. Could probably puncture someone's skin if you rammed them in hard enough. We get two of those, obviously. And we also get an alternate head and neck piece for flying mode. So first, we'll do flying mode. So for that, take off his back neck piece. Like that. And that. And then that off, just like in the movie, huh? And then what you do is you take the flying head, and it's not really rocket science, you just put it in, and before we put the next piece on, I want to show something here. 
A lot of people say that these are just the same pieces, but if you look carefully, you can see these bend upward a little more, whereas the flying neck ring is a little more straightened out to accommodate for the space of Gigan's head horn. Quick thing there, no one really knew. Thank you. I need to move the arms forward and the tail just came out, but you just move the arms forward, legs backward, tail down, and there you go. Flying guy again. The mouth can open a full range. He's in flying mode. So, anyways, next we will do power up mode, which is how I actually display his figure. So, take off the claws, which are vinyl, and I don't actually put the claws on all the way when I have him display with that. I just put them on halfway, and they fit on just as fine. But, that's <clears throat> whatever you want to do there. First, what you gotta do is you gotta take this neck ring, and I would recommend squeezing it in a little bit, and then fitting it on his neck like that there, and then you just take the alternate head, just like the flying one, not rocket science, put it on, take the back neck ring, attach that into the head, take the chainsaws, which are a lot easier to put in than on... And for the ordinary chains for the hook hands. And there you go. Power up guy game. Which I must say looks very nice. This, so like I said, I just laid him all over his mouth. Opens the least on this. You can see all the detail. The horn now has this beat up metal look to it and serrated. His mandibles are also larger and serrated. So accessories are very nice. So for sizing, put him back there. And he is with the Bandai Katagonk, I believe, Gotango from Final Wars. And the two do size up pretty well. And I think oh I think Gotango should be a little bit smaller, but this looks alright. And this is pretty much the only other 6-inch Final Wars figure I have. My repainted Bandai Creation 6-inch Final Wars Rodan, which these two were never on screen together, but I'm going to assume here that Gigan is very oversized because, well, let's face it, it's an early, it's an older Chigokin figure, so it's going to be like 79 feet tall. And he's, he's with the SH Monster Arts, just an SH Monster Arts figure, just for idea, because these are new popular figures, the Godzilla 1995 Rebirth version, they're about the same size, and I think this is kind of shorter for a Chigokin figure, you can see the horn kind of gives him extra height there for power-up mode, but, and, you know, these would work if you wanted to do a stop motion with him or something. And he's with, uh, I, I do have a Final Wars Godzilla, but it's a one-legged Ultimate Monsters Godzilla, and you can see here it's, if that was the sizing in the movie, the movie would be like an hour and a half shorter. Anyways, there he is with a standard Ultra Act figure, also for an idea of sizing. Not much there. These would also work if you wanted to do a fan film with those. Standard 6-inch Ultraman figure, vinyl one, which, again, these would work. Powered's 55. Well, looks good. And I don't have any other Mothra, because, you know, he did fight Mothra in the movie, and kind of like that Annihilate fire. The only Mothra I have that's coming kind of close to that is the GMK Mothra, which... It's an 8-inch figure, so it's completely oversized, and, and she wouldn't even need to get lit on fire to annihilate him. She would just whack him with his wing and die again dead and make the movie about three minutes shorter. Here she is with the... She... Da, he is with the NECA Godzilla 2014 6-inch version, just because, you know, another figure just to give an idea of sizing, because... Let's face it, all fuck trillion of you have this figure. And just like with 
Godzilla 95. But it works if you want to do a fan film with these guys. You can do it. And uh, he is with Showa Gigan. Just to give a comparison. Obviously, it doesn't have the claws on, but I think it's the Final Wars Gigan changed a lot in comparison to Showa Gigan. Especially tail tips, anyways. Sightings just keep going on. Here's another Monster Arts figure. <clears throat> Kiru 2002 version. Which, again, they work. If you want to do a fan film with these, this would look good. Damn. Mm. He is with a Pacific Rim standard kaiju figure. Because, you know, everyone... Probably all of you have at least one figure using utilizing this body. So this is just a general idea of how big one of those figures would look with this figure. And they look good together, I'd say. Yes, this is all nice. Shout out Michael Rosen. Um, here he is with a Pacific Rim Gypsy Danger, which... Again, just to give an idea of how big a Jaeger figure would look, and this is, I'm going to go with not accurate. I'm not sure on the size of the Jaegers, but, you know, I would want Gaian to be taller than Gypsy. And here he is with the YMSF Megalon. So, 1972, teamed up with Showa Gaian. 73, not 72! Megalon is leaning over quite a bit, but if he was standing up... He would be slightly taller than Gigan, so they go figure that would have been taller, but isn't because he's leaning forward. And finally, here he is with my only other Shigokin figure, Mechagodzilla 2, or Mechagodzilla 1975. It's Mechagodzilla 2. Anyways, yeah, if you ask me, Mechagodzilla 2 here is a very oversized figure. But we all love it. That is sizing, and now, other stuff about the figure, I don't know what to call this portion, but, pricing and history of the figure, I guess, I don't know, so, anyways, this figure was originally released as normal Gigan in a blue and silver paint job, that was released to coincide with the release of Godzilla Final Wars, although the box says 2005, even though it came out in 2004. Bam, I didn't get the dates right. I'm going to write them down. Just, just a little little fact for you there. Anyways. And was, I don't know the actual price of the figure. I was seeing 5,800 yen, which would have been about $58 in today's standard exchange rates. And then it was re-released in two other times. The second time, as what you're looking at here... Death Trigger Gigan, and a third time as toy as as a Toys Dream Project figure, which was basically a vac metalized blue Gigan, which looks very nice. You're probably wondering why the silver parts weren't vac metalized and the blue were on that one. And that's because a lot of the parts on this figure couldn't be vac metalized because they were vinyl and not either die cast or hard plastic. So parts would be, you know, a lot of the silver parts, I mean, like the claws, like all that would be vac metalized would be the tail and ed rim of the rotary saw and beak. That's, yeah. And it was vac metalized blue, although the chainsaws on that one were that metalized silver and that one is actually even rarer than this one this one is a pretty rare figure i don't know too much about this one all i know is that it's based off of that drawing right there how it was made i don't know a lot of people say it's a concept art but i highly highly doubt that there was also a marmot gigan final wars that was painted to look like this one. I believe a power-up and normal version, but the paint didn't look as good on that one. 
and the price of this figure usually runs you about 90 to 120 dollars i got this figure at g-fest for unfortunately 120 dollars but that was because it was from clawmark toys and i had my sights set on this figure so i wanted to get it and yeah price so it's kind of a pricey figure but so I would wait around a little bit until, maybe wait until one comes up at a cheap price. Chigokins are usually the easiest figures to get. Especially the special edition ones like this. So yeah, it's pricing and history of figures. So overall, I, for a rating for the figure, I would give it a... I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10 because... Well, no. 8.5 out of 10 because it's a very good figure. The detail is very nice. The proportions are a little off. The articulation is kind of limited, but the paint job is extremely nice. And yeah, there you go. 8.5 out of 10. If you can find the figure, pick it up. And that's the end of the review. Thank you for watching very much. If you actually did watch and you're not one of the five people who actually watch my videos, thank you so much for watching. If there's anything I left out in the review, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know what I should change about my reviews, what you liked, what you didn't like. You know, I'd like to know so I could change them in the future. If there's anything... Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you want to, you can subscribe. Okay. You can you can you can go now. That's that's the end of the video. You, you can you can go now. I, 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 fine, you can stay. But there's not much to stay and watch for. Boom 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 boom